Nestle's Quick for the greatest tasting chocolate milk and those famous Nestle's chocolate bars present Space Patrol! <laughs> High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol! <laughs> In today's transcribed Space Patrol adventure, Buzz and Appy are in their spacesuits advancing across the rocky surface of the planet Mercury toward the hideout of an escaped criminal. Hold it, Happy. Something moved up there ahead of us. It looked like an animal of some kind. An animal on Mercury? Yeah, that's right. Well, whatever it is, there's another one. Hap, they're small robots. Castro is probably using them to observe us. Yeah, they look like turtles, except that they move a lot faster. You go back a few hundred yards and figure out another plan of action. Hap. Behind us, we're surrounded by them. Yes, sir. Oh, my leg! Some kind of weapon. They're shooting pain rays right through our space suit. They're closing in on us. Dozens of them. Commander, I can't move. We'll return in just a moment with today's exciting space patrol adventure, the super brain of Balmer Castro. Say, Captain Toothville, will you settle an argument for me and the gang? I'll sure try, Tony. What's the trouble? Well, sir, we're all fighting over which Nestle's chocolate bar is the best. Janie says the milk chocolate. Joey votes for the almond bar. But I say crunch is the greatest. What do you think? Well, now, Tony, that is a tough one. Because as everybody knows, Nestle's makes the very best chocolate, no matter which bar you favor. There's nothing as smooth and creamy as a Nestle's milk chocolate bar in the red and white wrapper. And the Nestle almond bar in the blue and white wrapper is the same rich chocolate loaded with fresh toasted almonds. How about my favorite? Crunch. I was coming to that. Nestle's Crunch is the really different chocolate bar with a mystery, crunchy consistency that gets crisper with every bite. It's really out of this world. But which one do you really think is best? Best? Why, any Nestle's bar is best, Tony. There's never any argument about that. So, gang, when you want the best in chocolate bars, you want Nestle's. You know what Commander Corey says? He says Nestle bars are tops in our ration because they have all the rich milk and sugar it takes to speed up your jets and give you extra rocket energy. But, Captain, you still haven't settled our argument. Well, I'll tell you what, Tony, why don't you take this handful of Nestle's bars to the gang and tell them there's no use arguing. Just remember, N-E-S-T-L-E-S. Nestle's makes the very best chocolate. <laughs> And now, today's Space Patrol adventure, the super brain of Valmer Castro. For nearly an hour, Commander Corey and Cadet Happy have listened spellbound to Dr. Ernest Flake as the great authority on the human mind describes his new invention, the Cerebroscope. Dr. Blake, a member of the clinical consulting staff of the Criminal Rehabilitation Center on the planet Mars, has made a special space flight to Terra to report his recent discoveries to Commander Corey. As I understand it, Dr. Blake, your cerebroscope can actually increase or amplify intelligence. Yes, Commander. Its full applications and possibilities can't be estimated at present without further test. A moment ago, Doctor, you said you had increased the intelligence of rats with your cerebroscope. Yes, from 50 to 100 percent. Wow. It's very interesting, Dr. Blake, but... Uh, Dr. Blake, have you experimented on humans? Well, that is one reason for my visit, Commander. I want official permission to test the cerebroscope on volunteers in the Criminal Rehabilitation Center. You mean on those eligible to be discharged as cured? Naturally. It might be dangerous to increase the mental powers of those who still have criminal tendencies. Just how dangerous, no one can say. I don't believe you've answered my question, Doctor. Have you experimented on humans? I, uh, I made one test. Or rather, my assistant did. Who was the subject? I was. What were the results? Before the experiment, I took several intelligence tests under the supervision of my assistant. After just five minutes of cerebroscope radiations, I repeated those tests along with similar tests. Commander, my score was more than 40% higher. Smoke and rockets. And you're now more intelligent than you were before. Perhaps. But I don't know how permanent the effects are or in how many areas of intellect the radiations are effective. That's why I want to make more tests on others. Dr. Blake, I'd like to look into this matter a little further before I make a recommendation. Well, could you come to the rehabilitation center and examine the cerebroscope? I'd like to very much, Doctor. But I can't get away for at least two days. Mm. Well, I, I have some business here on Terra that will keep me here that long. Suppose I contact you day after tomorrow. Fine, Doctor. We'll see you then. 
A short distance from Lowell City on the planet Mars is the Criminal Rehabilitation Center. Here, one of the latest arrivals, Valmer Castro, is undergoing initial processing. He sits silently as the official interviewer, Rhoda Nexon, gives him routine instructions. In this first test, a series of questions will be flashed on the screen. Break it off, Rhoda. Break it off. Your tenants are gone. Oh, just to be safe, Mr. Castro, I think we'd better proceed with a regular test. Now look, I offered to let you use that cerebroscope on me in return for a chance to escape. Quick, you give me that treatment, the sooner I can figure a way to get out of here. I know, but we can't make it obvious that I'm helping you escape. I'm taking enough chances as it is. I'll cover you, Rhoda. You'll make it look as though I um, forced you to help me. Well, then at least take part of the test. We've got plenty of time. The attendants won't be back for three hours. How long does the cerebroscope treatment take? I'm going to give you 15 minutes of radiation. And that'll make me the smartest operator in the solar system, huh? Well, I can't promise that, but your brain will be at least twice as efficient as it is now. Shall we get on with the test? All right. A few hours later, in Space Patrol headquarters on Terra, Commander Corey gives Cadet Happy some astonishing news. I don't know the full details yet, Happy, but Valmer Castro escaped from the rehab center. Smoke and rockets, how did he manage that? That's the big mystery, Hap. It's almost as though he had the cooperation of the whole staff, yet we know that's impossible. Commander, is it true about Castro? Is that why you sent for me? Yes, Dr. Blake, it's true. I can't believe it. No one has ever escaped from that Martian center. I haven't pieced the story together yet, Doctor, but somehow Castro managed to deceive several key members of the staff. He literally walked out, or rather drove out in a surface car, and no one raised a hand to stop him. I've had a strange premonition all morning, Commander, a strong feeling that something was wrong at the center. Since I took that cerebroscope treatment, my mind seems sensitive to thoughts of others. He must have had help to escape like that. Such a thing is unthinkable. Our staff is thoroughly reliable. I know. And they're experienced in dealing with clever criminals. Uh, this had to happen while I was away. I haven't told you the worst part of it, Doctor. Your assistant, Rhoda Nexon, disappeared with Castro. What? And your cerebroscope is missing. Oh. It's true. Hey, the cerebroscope. Say, wait a minute. Maybe that's the explanation. How about it, Doctor? Could your device make a super intelligent crook out of an ordinary swindler? I can't say for certain. But I am afraid it's possible. Well, still, how would Castro have known about the cerebroscope? And who would he get to give him the treatment? That's what we're going to find out. Let's get to the spaceport and blast off for Mars. An all-planets alert has given every space patrol agent a description of Valmer Castro and Dr. Blake's missing assistant, Rhoda Nexon. At this moment, the escaped criminal sits calmly in a small apartment in Lowell City, Mars, while Rhoda Nixon nervously but expertly checks a series of test forms. Haven't you finished yet, Rhoda? Oh, yes, but I was just rechecking. Why waste time? You know as well as I do that the answered tabulating system is foolproof. These results are unbelievable. Fantastic. Then I am a genius, is that it? It's frightening. Your score is 28 points higher than the previous top rating. Is that so? And who is the ex-champion? Professor Maxwell Huxley, a descendant of a long line of geniuses. <laughs> so so I topped old Huxley, huh? Well, not in a matter of actual information, of course, but in intellectual potential, you're far superior. Naturally. So the cerebroscope made me an all-around genius. No. In moral values, the sense of right and wrong, you're still subnormal. <laughs> well... Uh, Mr. Castro, we've completed the agreement, so so I'll be going. You'll remain with me. I may have further use for you. I don't want any money from you, Mr. Castro, and I promise I won't go to the Space Patrol. Just let me go. You might as well stop begging, Rhoda. Your pleading has absolutely no effect upon me, except to irritate me. I don't trust you, Miss Nexon, and I have good reason not to. Well, what do you mean? Didn't I help you escape? You had no intention of keeping that promise, Rhoda. You merely wanted a human guinea pig for an experiment. Dr. Blake refused to test his invention on human beings, so you decided to take advantage of his absence and do a little research on your own. Isn't that right? Oh, how did you know that? Then I was right. You didn't dream that Blake's gadget would make me able to outsmart you and the rest of the staff at the rehab center. But I told you it would. Why would I risk getting in bed with Dr. Blake and losing my job? You've got what you wanted, a powerful brain in your freedom. Oh, be fair, Mr. Castro, let me go. Oh, you forget, Rhoda, that... Although my intellect is high, my sense of fairness of right and wrong is subnormal. <laughs> now, you're staying with me. Now, be quiet. I have to figure a way out of our present danger. Danger? What danger? I don't know exactly. But I have a strong sense of an opposing force. 
a powerful mind working against me. I think... In fact, I'm sure it's the mind of Dr. Ernest Blake. Elsewhere at the Terra spaceport, Commander Corey and Cadet Happy are ready to blast off for Mars. With them in the control compartment of the Terra 5 is Dr. Blake. Instrument check completed, Commander. Good. Dr. Blake will blast off as soon as we get the go-ahead from space control. Just relax. There's something I should have told you before, Commander. I don't think there's any doubt that my assistant Rhoda Nexon is responsible for Castro's escape. Mind you, I can't give you a single bit of evidence for suspecting her of disobedience. Yet, I'm convinced of it. What's more, I'm sure that before we reach Mars, I'll be able to tell you where to find Rhoda and Castro. I hope you're right. Space Control, Terra, to Commander Corey, aboard Terra 5. Corey here. Go ahead, Space Control. Mars, space lock is clear, sir. Space Control on. Stand by for blast off. Standing by, sir. Fire rockets. Fire rockets. Up, ship, and away. Come on, Rhoda. Let's get out of here. Space Patrol must be looking for us everywhere. For all we know, there may be agents out in the street right now. There aren't. Our main source of danger is coming toward us now, from Terra. How do you know? Don't ask questions. I know a place on Mercury where we'll be perfectly safe. Right now, our enemies are roaring toward Mars. But they'll never arrive. They will destroy themselves out in space. I just rechecked the vector computer, sir. We're two hours out of Mars. Uh, that'll bring us into Lowell City at 1340. Is Dr. Blake still sleeping? No, sir. The last time I went back aft, he was pacing his compartment and muttering to himself. When he saw me in the corridor, he slammed the door. Uh, he's under quite a strain, poor fellow. He's got me worried, Commander. How can he be so positive that Castro's in Lowell City? I think he knows a lot more about this escape than he lets on. You'll find out how much he knows before very long. You're not going to find out anything, Commander. Hmm? I've got a blast gun here. Do what I tell you or I'll use it. Dr. Blake, this is hardly the time for a joke. This is no joke, Corey. You're planning to hold me responsible for Castro's escape. But you're not going to hold me up to disgrace. Change vector. Dr. Blake, I don't know what you're talking about. Do what I tell you, or I'll blast both of you. We'll return to Space Patrol in just a moment. Come and get it! Hey, all you rocket jockeys, I've got something new and sensational to tell you about today. I mean Nestle's Quick, the greatest way to make chocolate milk you ever tasted. Quick makes the richest, most chocolatey, most delicious chocolate milk in all the universe. It's the same wonderful flavor as Nestle chocolate bars. Aw, oh, just think of drinking milk that tastes like that. Jumpin' Jupiter! And Space Patrollers, Nestle's Quick is just as quick and easy to make as it is delicious. You can fix yourself a tall, frosty glass of Quick in no time, any time. Now, here's all you do. Pour out your glass of milk and then add two spoonfuls of Quick powder. Yes, sir, you heard me. First, you pour in the milk and then you put in the Quick. Nestle's designed quick to mix in a flash. It's never messy to make, and you don't have to beat it or shake it in special containers. And that special Nestle's chocolate flavor won't settle at the bottom or stick to the sides. No, sir. Quick is real chocolatey from the first sip to the last swallow. And Mom will be real pleased to know that Quick is fortified with vitamin D, just what you need for strong, healthy bones. And believe me, when Mom sees how you drink up every drop of your milk, she'll be glad to get Nestle's Quick all the time. Now, gang, here's how to get the official chocolate milk maker for all space patrollers. Ask Mom to bring home the big brown and yellow can of Nestle's Quick. That's Q-U-I-K, Quick. And then the happiest sound at your house will be the one that means great chocolate milk. That's the Quick Call, like this. Come and get it! Nestle's Quick! <laughs> And now, back to our Space Patrol adventure, the super brain of Balmer Castro. Commander Corey and Cadet Happy are aboard the Terra 5, heading for the planet Mars with Dr. Ernest Blake, inventor of the Cerebroscope, a device that vastly increases the efficiency of the brain. Through the use of this invention, Balmer Castro was able to outwit the staff of the Martian Criminal Rehabilitation Center and escape, taking Dr. Blake's assistant, Rhoda Nexon, with him. For some unaccountable reason, Dr. Blake is attempting to force Buzz to change the vector of the Terra 5. I'm warning you, Corey. 
Don't turn around or I'll blast you. Okay, Doctor, you name it. Where do we go? Uh, let's see. Uh... Drop the gun, Doctor. Uh, I said drop it. Uh, there. It's okay, Commander. I've got him. Nice work, Happy. I'll admit you had me worried when you jumped him. Take a look at the gun, Commander. Oh, he was bluffing. It's a ray gun. Yes, sir. If it was a blaster, I wouldn't have dared risk it. Uh, when I saw it was a ray gun, I figured the worst that could happen to you was that, well, he'd put you to sleep for an hour. I... This is a ray gun. <sighs> what have I done? What have I done? You haven't done anything, fortunately. But just what were you trying to do, Doctor? I, I, I don't know. I, I must have lost my mind. Something made me do it, Commander. Some powerful force took control of me. Castro. Castro? Yes. I know he's used the cerebroscope now. I know it. And you think he forced you to attack us? There's no doubt about it. My, my behavior a moment ago it couldn't possibly have benefited me. But it could benefit Castro. I tell you, I, I thought that ray gun was a blaster. It's hard to believe that Castro could control your mind from a distance, yet he seems to have deceived and controlled the staff at the rehab center. Yeah, there must be a lot more to this cerebroscope of yours than you told us, Doctor. There's a lot about the human mind that we don't know. I tell you, Commander, Volmer Castro's mind is powerful enough to send a spark across space to my mind. And perhaps you're sending a spark to his. Yes, but not as strong. Remember, uh, I was subjected to the cerebroscope radiations for a few minutes. Who knows how long Castro may have been under the treatment. Wow. <laughs> Commander, Mercury. Change vector to Mercury. Why? That's where you'll find Castro. Catch him, Happy. Uh, yes, sir. He's unconscious, sir. Take care of him, Hap. I'm changing Vector to Mercury. Some moments later, viewscope scanning beams sweep back and forth over the rocky surface of the planet Mercury as Buzz and Happy search for a trace of Balmer Castro. If Dr. Blake is right, we should be over Castro's hiding place. Should I wake the doctor, sir? I don't think you could, Happy. A while ago, I gave him a short burst with a vapor injector to put him to sleep. Smoking rockets, is he getting out of hand again? No, it was Dr. Blake's own idea. He's afraid that if his brain is fully conscious, Castro might become aware of it and know we were after him. Oh, I see. So immediately after the doctor got his mental fix on Castro, he asked to be put to sleep. Uh-oh. Commander, look. A grounded spaceship. Yeah. In the black shadow of that peak. Without the infrared probe beam, we'd never have seen it. Get our spacesuits out of the locker, Hap. We'll land and search for Castro's hideout. Under the sun-baked rock of Mercury, Balmer Castro relaxes in one of the cool, comfortably furnished chambers of his hideout. His captive, Rhoda Nexon, paces the floor nervously. Rhoda, sit down. Take it easy. I don't like this place. How long are you going to keep me here? Really, you could be in a far worse place. Even if it is underground, it's well lighted, with its own independent air-producing system. But I've set aside a room for your private use. Look at you, Castro. You fancy yourself a master criminal, and yet you're living underground like a mole, hiding. Well, that's only temporary. In time, I shall be able to go and come as I please. Suppose the space patrol finds your hideout. You're trapped. I'm not defenseless, Rhoda. I have a corps of alert and well-armed sentries guarding this place. Why, I haven't seen a living soul here. That's right. I didn't say the sentries were living. They're small, highly maneuverable, and in some respects, they think for themselves. Robots. Exactly. The robots could hold off quite a force until I escape to the cavern of the spaceship, if necessary. I don't care how brilliant you are, Castro. You're still one man against organized society. At present, I am just one man. But a true leader has no difficulty recruiting followers. I will draw them into me with irresistible force. What's but... that? Come on, I better lock you up for the time being. Well, what do you mean, lock me up? What's happening? The robot sentries have sighted a moving object on the surface near the hideout. Before I go to the control chamber, I'm going to put you where you can't interfere. Meantime, in their spacesuits, Buzz and Appy walk across the rough, oven-hot rock surface of Mercury, searching for Castro's hideout. Suddenly, Buzz grips Happy's arm. Hold it, Happy. Something moved up there ahead of us. It looked like an animal of some kind. An animal on Mercury? That's right. There's no atmosphere. Well, whatever it is, there's another one. Have their robots. Castro is probably using them to observe us. They look like turtles, except they move a lot faster. You go back a few hundred yards and figure out another plan of action. Hap, look behind us. We're surrounded by them. Yes, sir. Oh, my 
Clear Lake. There's some kind of weapon. They're shooting pain rays right through our spacesuits. They're closing in on us. Dozens of them. But they've stopped now. It's almost as though they were watching us. They are, and so am I. It's Valmar Castro, I believe. That's right, Commander. I can see every move you make through the viewscope eye of each of those little robots. I can monitor you through any single robot or a combination. Now, uh, since you seem so anxious to find my hideout, my sentries will escort you. Follow them. All right, Castro. First, drop your ray guns. Go on, or I'll jolt you with a pain ray. That's better. Surrounded by the strange turtle-like robots, Buzz and Appy make their way across the rough rocks. Almost like living things, the robots occasionally break formation to avoid obstacles, but immediately close in again. Finally, Buzz and Appy enter an airlock, with four of the robots scurrying in after them. At last, they're in an underground chamber, face to face with Valmer Castro. That's it, gentlemen. Raise your face pieces. All right, Castro. What have you done with Rhoda Nixon? She's here, Commander. You will join her in a moment. You were directed here by Dr. Blake, I presume. I thought I'd disposed of him out in space, but occasionally I still seem to make slight contact with his mind. Here, Rhoda. I brought you some company. Space Patrolman. Yes, Commander Corey and the cadet. Commander, you'll notice that the robots have stopped a few feet away from you. They're watching you. They're going to see that none of you leave this room alive. Castro, what are you going to do? I'm going to the control panel. He's a, he's a fiend, Commander. A fiend with a super brain. Did you help him escape from the rehab center? I didn't mean to. Honestly, I did not. I never dreamed anything like this would happen. Let's not waste time talking. Hat, let's see if we can get out of here. Uh, maybe we can break down that door. Oh! Hold it! We've got to knock out those robots. When we get close to them, they blast us with, with a pain ray. If there was only something in here we could use for a weapon. There's nothing. I've looked. If there was only a rod or something, maybe we could flip them over on their backs and get out of their range. Hey, how about that chair? We couldn't get close enough. Even if we threw the chair, I doubt that it would smash them. They look very rugged. Yeah. There's nothing on these walls except a couple of mirrors. Nothing that would do us any good. Oh, oh. I'm at the robot control panel now, Corey. I'm gradually increasing the strength of the pain rays. In a few moments, you'll all suffer unendurable agony. You can't avoid the robots. Wherever you move, they'll follow you. Even when I'm on my way to my spaceship, the robots will continue their work. Uh, I can't stand this. Commander, she's fainted. The girl is fortunate. I'm leaving now, Commander, with Blake's cerebroscope. I can't bear to watch people suffer. <laughs> dirty rat. We can't fight those robots. But maybe we can trick them. Oh. Notice they avoid each other. It's a built-in reaction to keep them from getting in each other's way. Yeah, well, that doesn't do us much good. We're not robots. No, but maybe we can make these gadgets think we are. Huh? The mirrors. We'll each take one from the wall. Hap, hurry. Yes, sir. Hold the mirror close to the floor, Hap. Now, watch out. Don't drop it. Oh, the pain is so bad, I can, I can hardly control myself. Hurry, Hap. Hold the mirror so the robot's electric eye will see its own reflection. Like this. Come on. It's working. They're turning away from us. They act like they're going mad. Yeah, they're whirling around like crazy. Maneuver them away from the door. That's it. Wow, are they confused. Put them that way while I try to break down the door. Here, take this other mirror. Yes, sir. <laughs> Keep them at bay. <clears throat> got it, Hap. Keep the robots off while I carry the girl out. Okay, Commander. I've got them under control. All right, Hap. I've got Rhoda. Hang on to those mirrors and back toward the door. Yes, sir. They're following us, Commander. I don't think that broken door will hold them, but the mirrors will. Half as you back out of the room, put that chair in front of the doorway and prop the mirrors against it. Okay, Commander. Hey, it's holding them, sir. They won't come any closer than three feet from the mirror. Let's find a spacesuit for Rhoda and get her to the ship. Well, what about Castro and those other robots outside? We'll smash the robot control panel. Then we've got to get the Terra 5 before Castro tries to blast it from his ship. Moments later, Buzz and Appy get Rhoda Nexon aboard the Terra 5, where the now fully conscious Dr. Blake is anxiously waiting for them. Uh, doctor, take care of Rhoda. Get her out of that spacesuit. Yes, Commander. Is she all right? She's coming around. 
I saw that ship blast off, Commander, about five minutes ago. It was Castro. You're lucky, Doctor. If Castro had any space weapons aboard, he'd have blasted this ship for sure. Happy, prepare the ship for blast off. Yes, sir. My cerebroscope. Did you find it? Castro took it with him. You were right, Doctor. Rhoda gave him a treatment. He's got a super brain. With my cerebroscope, he, he can take other criminals and raise their mental powers. Smoke and rockets. He can form a ring of super criminals. That's what we've got to prevent. Yes, but what chance have we got? With that tremendous intellect of his. Don't forget, Doctor. No man is really smart if he sets all decent people against him. Happy fire rockets. Up, ship, and away. In just a moment, an action preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure. Brought to you by Rice Checks and Wheat Checks, the bite sized cereals in the red and white checkerboard packages. Say, did you ever take a taste test, Space Patrollers? Well, man, oh man, it sure is fun when it's checks you're taste testing. How do I know? Well, I just took one. First, I tested them with sugar and cream. Mmm, mmm, super keen taste. Then I added fruit. Super neat taste. Next, I tried them right out of the red and white checkerboard package. That was a snack test. And checks, rice, or wheat for snacks can't be beat. Yes, sir, gang, I rate checks tops for taste. You'll rate them tops, too. Next, I tried them for size. Bite size is the just right size. Just right for your spoon. Just right for delicious, easy eating. Checks, rice, or wheat tops for size. You bet. And as for get up and go, gang, have yourself a good nourishing breakfast with rice checks or wheat checks. And you'll be rated tops for get up and go. So, Space Patrollers, you take the rice checks, wheat checks taste test today. And I'm positive you'll agree. Checks rate tops three ways. For taste... For size, for get up and go. Rice checks, wheat checks. The cereals with the super swell free Space Patrol trading card inside the red and white checkerboard package. And now, a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure. A saboteur has just escaped from the lock compartment aboard the Terra 5. Now, with ray guns drawn, Buzz and Happy are searching the ship. He still must have that special spacesuit on, sir. Uh, at least it wasn't in the compartment. How did he get out? Smashed the door. Uh, rough customer. Uh, there it is. After him, have... Yeah. Halt where you are, or I'll fire! He's heading for the weapons compartment. This'll stop him. Wow, that ray gun never even phased him. It's that suit. He's completely shielded. Come on, we'll have to tackle him. He's in the compartment with all those weapons. All right, Alcorn, come out of there. Have it get me. And you better have something better than a ray gun. But they can drop you if you take another step. Be sure to join us next week for the thrilling story, The Test of the XK-3. Space Patrol, created by Mike Moser, starring Ed Cameron as Commander Corey, and Lynn Osborne as Cadet Happy, was written by Lou Houston. Produced and directed by Larry Robertson, executive producer Mike Devery. Other players were Norman Jolly, Virginia Hewitt, Ken Mayer, and Anthony Sides. Dick Tufel speaking. Now, don't forget to tune in next Saturday and every Saturday for the new exciting Space Patrol. Space Patrol was brought to you today by Nestle's Quick for the greatest tasting chocolate milk and those famous Nestle's chocolate bars. Be sure to see another exciting Space Patrol program on your local ABC television station. Consult your local paper for time and channel. This program is broadcast to our armed forces overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Space Patrol came to you transcribed from Hollywood. This is ABC Radio Network. <laughs>